2022 was a banner year for nuclear energy in terms of policy achievements, uh, both, both in the US and around the world. Quick review of everything that was accomplished this year, because it probably was the best year for the nuclear industry in decades, honestly. It's really, really big. So it's, it's hard to keep track of, of all, the, all the great things that happened. All right, we'll start in February here. We had West Virginia lifting their nuclear moratorium, uh, joining you know, Montana, Kentucky, Wisconsin, and there are active bills being discussed in Minnesota, my home state, uh, which I got to testify in one of them. That was great. Uh, and uh, in Illinois. So I expect those moratoriums on new nuclear construction to come down uh, next year, hopefully. Um, France, uh, which had been declining steadily for years with their reactor performance, um, announced uh, six to 14 new reactors, an SMR program. Um, in May, we had Alaska passing a law that's streamlined micro reactor siting. Very cool. You probably heard of Project Pele there. There's a bill um, that would help enable uh, FEMA and the National Disaster Response to use micro reactors uh, in places that have lost power. Um, a bill that was introduced recently in the federal Congress. So, kind of related to that, but not on the slide. Um, in June, we saw in the UK across the pond, Sizewell C was authorized. Uh, also, uh, qualified for the regulated asset base uh, funding mechanism, which means they can get way cheaper loans than Hinkley Point C. I don't know if you guys have seen the cost of Hinkley Point C graph, but about two thirds of it is actually the financing. And it's like they paid for that thing with a credit card. <laughs> it's, uh, it's ridiculous. Um, so uh, Sizewell C will be quite a bit cheaper for that reason and also the first of a kind uh, experience uh, that went with, with Hinkley. In July, uh, we saw, we've been fighting for this for two years to get nuclear energy included in the EU sustainable taxonomy. Uh, and it was a bit dicey and ended up having to include gas as well in order to get it done. Um, and, uh, and a few conditions about, you know, accident tolerant fuel and things, but nonetheless, nuclear power was included in the sustainable finance taxonomy. Generation Atomic uh, helped drive in over 5,000 letters to members of the European Commission and European Parliament um, by uh, helping you know catalyze all our, our allies in, in Europe and write uh, form letters that they could uh, customize and send to their uh, representative their representatives and I think we translated into 12 different languages with volunteers from different countries very very cool uh, and then France uh, keeping it going they renationalize EDF they double down on nuclear and the NRC announces the intent to certify our uh, you know our our next uh, I guess it's a Gen 3 plus, but one of the the new reactor designs here, um, a new scale. That's good. Continuing August, August gets its own slide. That's how good August was. <laughs> uh, probably saw that uh, Dow Chemical inked a deal with X Energy uh, to use their reactor for uh, heat processes um, and one of their Gulf Coast sites uh, by 2030. Amazing, see the chemical industry get involved. There was this bill called the Chips and Science Act, uh, which does a lot of great things uh, for the semiconductor industry, um, but also had a good chunk of funding for for nuclear university programs and funding test reactors. Uh, so very important in building up the supply chain of people that we're gonna need uh, to be successful in our transition to, to more nuclear. Um, we also saw uh, Poland uh, really going hard on nuclear. They're looking at uh, getting a bunch of AP1000s. They changed the law to um, get their first nuclear plant um, being constructed um, by 2026 are gonna be starting there. That's, that's going to be huge. I, I expect Poland to have the most rapid uh, clean energy transition in history uh, if, if their plans are, are complete, going from, from coal to nuclear um, in you know, just under a decade. They're going to beat France and Sweden uh, and, and get, the, get the trophy for fastest clean energy transition. Uh, and then we saw the, uh, the start of uh, Baraka 3. You know? uh, the Koreans have been building uh, APR 1400s in the UAE. Two of them have started up so far, number three this year as well, number four next year. So, you know, that'll be four reactors in uh, I think 12 or 13 years. Um, that's, uh, that's pretty damn good, actually. <laughs> 
Um, and then, uh, of course, the Inflation Reduction Act, which, <laughs> whew, yeah, I know, I know, a aptly named. <laughs> like, let's reduce inflation by pouring a bunch of gasoline on the fire of the economy. <laughs> but um, some amazing provisions for nuclear energy, so I'm not complaining. Um, what were they? That one's worth... Uh, uh, deconstructing a little bit here. So one, we got some tax credits for existing nuclear, $15 a megawatt hour, which is making, uh, certainly made the, the restart of, or the extension of Diablo Canyon more enticing, and also potentially the restart of Palisades in Michigan, which would be the first nuclear power plant brought back from the dead. That would be incredible. There's a woo back there. Agreed. I think it's, I think it's going to happen. We'll see. We'll see what the NRC thinks about that. But <laughs> um, we also have the investment tax credit of $25 a megawatt hour. Uh, or 30% on uh, new plants brought into service after 2025. And you get a bonus if you do it at a, uh, a brownfield site of uh, existing you know, coal plant, uh, something like that. And uh, the DOE just uh, released a remarkable study that showed, they, they looked at all the <clears throat> existing and former coal sites and found that uh, about 80% of them would be uh, quite suitable for transition to nuclear. Uh, yeah, amazing. Can reuse a lot of the cooling infrastructure. It's, yeah, it's just really, really inspiring stuff. Um, and then, uh, and then some money for uh, clean hydrogen. So you see a lot of activity from some of the big players in the nuclear industry. You know, Constellation, um, uh, a few others. I think Southern looking at creating these uh, hydrogen hubs, um, which uh, which which should be huge. You know, we're going to need. Uh, carbon neutral synthetic fuels, ammonia uh, for fertilizer, all that stuff. So it's amazing to see that we're making progress towards that and, and incentivizing that. Um, also our national labs, we're gonna need more test reactors if we're gonna get these, uh, all these advanced reactors you know, certified, right? So amazing to see 150 million going to the DOE to improve the national lab infrastructure from this bill. Uh, and then uh, a nice, uh, nice sum of 700 million to get that uh, domestic supply of HALU. Um, you know, high assay, low enriched uranium that many of these advanced reactors call for. I know the Biden administration wanted a little bit more on top of that, another 1.5 billion. Didn't quite get it, but hey, there's always next year. Uh, <laughs> so uh, that was the Inflation Re Reduction Act. We we uh, sent quite a few uh, emails in support of that and phone calls and had people contacting their elected representatives for many of the provisions um, that ended up being in it um, that were in other bills previously, like ANIA and NILA and things like that. Um, all right, so, all right, now we're into September and we don't have an animation for each individual point on here, so I'll just talk through them here. Uh, number one, Diablo Canyon gets that five-year extension. Yeah, heck yeah. And then, that's just, uh, I'm still processing how uh, amazing that is in the state of California. <laughs> and uh, you know, that's, that's really where, where I got my start was moving out to California, organizing a march uh, in, in support of the plants and uh, to see everything come together. And the union, IBW 1245, uh, who co-signed on closing that plant uh, originally do a 180 and say, you know what, we, we actually need this thing and we're ready to fight for it. And yeah, they showed up in Sacramento the day the, the bill is being voted on, chanting, save Diablo Canyon, save Diablo Canyon, as legislators walk by into the Capitol. And it's very, very inspiring. Um, really, really happy about that. Um, and uh, yeah, and it couldn't have happened without a massive coalition of all the nuclear advocacy organizations, uh, like uh, Stand Up for Nuclear, Save Clean Energy, uh, Generation Atomic, of course, American Nuclear Society got in on it, um, and probably uh, Breakthrough Institute, Environmental Project, Progress and probably a few other that I'm a few others that I'm forgetting, um, but uh, oh yeah, Californians for green nuclear power. Yeah, it was awesome and a great study from MIT Stanford that helped to justify um, the uh, extension of this plant from a financial standpoint. Um, in that study, it also uh, talked about the potential of Diablo Canyon for desalination, uh, and I think that's that's going to be the next thing we push for. Uh, we've already brought together a coalition of a dozen. Uh, 
uh, agriculture organizations in the state of California uh, in support of desal at Diablo. So I'm, I'm excited to keep mobilizing them and growing that coalition uh, next year to get uh, get desal on the legislative agenda and drought proof the state of California. It can be done with Diablo. It's amazing. Um, all right, so Japan uh, working on uh, their, their restarting their nuclear reactors. Uh, their prime minister is pro-nuclear right now. Incredible. Um, and uh, they announced recently they're going to be extending the maximum lifespan of their nuclear plants beyond 60 years. Cool. Yeah, very, very cool. Um, France announced uh, their plan to restart 27 reactors by the end of the year and another five before March. So yeah, <laughs> exactly. It was worth, it's worth clapping. That's it takes uh, takes some serious uh, onions to say, oh yeah, three months, yeah, we can restart 27 of our reactors. I, I, I wish them the best, <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, um, hopefully they can do it. it. It'd be amazing, and they're gonna need all that energy over the winter, right? Um, two out of three German reactors were extended, at least temporarily, uh, and there is further conversation about additional, um, and uh, I got another bullet point about that a little later, so I won't say too much. Uh, South Korea added nuclear to their sustainable finance taxonomy. Great. Terra Power got a huge chunk of funding, about $750 million from this uh, SK group in South Korea, and uh, Bill Gates and Warren Buffett and friends. And then we got another, another reactor start, Oki Luoto 3 hits uh, full power. And um, oh, and then that's a separate bullet point. But Chinese uh, molten salt reactor was authorized to start as well this year. So we got some MSRs going. Yeah. I I remember John and and uh, it, Jim Kennedy talking about how the Chinese were were running laps around us and we haven't even started the race. And uh, <laughs> case in point, absolutely. Um, so big thing in October here. Uh, number one, uh, we had a petition. There was a petition going to uh, stop the phase out. Um, I think I, I wrote that wrong. Actually, it says keep plants open, but uh, what I meant to write was stop the phase out of nuclear energy in Germany, which also means keep the plants open. Uh, it had uh, it needed to get fifty thousand signatures. It was about thirty twenty five thousand short of that with a week left, and the whole international nuclear community Community rallied, sent it out, you know, DM'd a bunch of people on Twitter, sent it all over the place to, to everyone uh, we, we could find. And it did indeed, before the deadline, pass the 50,000 threshold. And it's, yeah, huge. So it's, uh, it needed to get, yeah, it's awesome. It needed, too. what was that? I signed it. It's a page in German. It was, yeah. I need to get the Google Translate out. Yeah. Anybody in here sign it? Anybody? Oh, wow. Awesome. This side of the room is doing really well. You guys need to work on it. Put those hands back up. Let's show the internet. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. All right. Who signed the German petition here? Excellent. Thanks for supporting our allies. If you guys want to pretend you did, we won't tell anybody. <laughs> uh, yeah. There'll, there'll be more opportunities. Opportunities. So this means the German government has to officially respond. That's what that, that threshold was. So awesome to see that quorum reach. Um, the Virginia uh, governor, whose name ex escapes me right now, but uh, uh, Mr. McGinnis uh, mentioned him uh, earlier, uh, released the energy plan, nuclear as a centerpiece to it, recycling of nuclear fuel, also a very important aspect. Awesome to see that on a state level plan, and hopefully we see more of it. And then uh, just got news, I think it was yesterday, or maybe earlier this morning, uh, uh, Vogel 3 has started loading fuel, finally, <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> yeah, so better late than never, right? <laughs> um, yeah, what, uh, what do they say? The, uh, the best time to load fuel at Vogel 3 was 10 years ago. The second best time was today. <laughs> um, yeah, so, um, yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, but I did forget to mention Pick, yeah, does, is, did I miss Pickering on here? Pickering should be on here. Maybe I skipped over it. But uh, yeah, Pickering also got extended for uh, one year. And then, a, yeah, thanks. Two, is it two? 2026. 2026. So Pickering got extended for two years. Um, plus, uh, they're looking into their feasibility study was was uh, ordered on further extension up to, what are we thinking? Refurbishment. Refur 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 Refurbishment for an additional 40 years. All right. Massive. Yeah, that's, what, three, three and a half gigawatts? Thank <laughs> you.
Yeah, 3.2, massive. Um, that's that's amazing. Um, yeah, I'm seeing some hands here. I probably missed a few things. Um, uh, yeah, all right. Well, we'll, let's see. Anybody? What did I miss out of out of all this amazing stuff? Because I probably missed something. Um, yes, sir. I'll just repeat uh, what you say. I didn't know anything about Wyoming, and I think it's the first yeah. place for a nuclear to replace the specific coal plant. Yeah, see, and the Advanced Reactor Demonstration Project, which was in 2021. There are so many good things at the end of 2021 too, right? Same with the Illinois plants, all of that. Yeah, I, I was like, oh, I gotta cut it off somewhere. Yeah. I didn't see any mention of Senate Bill 4242. Which one is Senate Bill 4242? What's that one? It's a thorium act. Um, is that the Tuberville? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So some very serious conversation committee hearings about the the um, thorium. Was it preservation of? 233. 233. Yeah. So that's good too. Nothing. I, I don't think anything was passed technically, but. It's introduced. It was referred to the committee on energy and natural resources yeah. in May. Yeah. Introduce some conversation, some progress. Maybe our, our next conference we can cheer the successful passage of that one. Uh, Jim. Yeah. yeah, China's latest five year plan is worth 180 million. Three dudes at 2035. And they're on track. Yeah, yeah. China's going to build a whole bunch of nuclear reactors. I think they announced that during COP26 in Glasgow. Um, and I think it was, if I remember right, it was 100, 130 new reactors, not 180, right? 180 total, which by 2035, which is, uh, yeah, that's massive, clearly. Um, yeah, any other ones that I missed? There's uh, been some progress in Indonesia, an American company working with the Indonesian Okay. Company. I don't recall uh, the last I heard about them. But All right. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, some good good stuff happening in Indonesia as well. Um, and this is my uh, brief commercial for Generation Atomic, uh, ways to support our work. Um, you know, we do lots of these legislative actions in several different countries. And so if you're on our email list, we'll send it out. If you follow us on, on social media, you'll see these Take Action Tuesdays uh, kind of suggestions. Hey, this is a good thing to contact your, your state or national representative about. So, you know, doing that. Um, yeah, sharpening your skills. We saw yesterday, we have a bunch of uh, workshops to help you get better at advocacy. Um, we have a volunteer group. It's, uh, it's on our website, get involved. And um, yeah, and then of course we are, you know, we're funded by, uh, in large part by donors. Uh, more than half our funding comes from uh, small, small donors, large donors, and then we get a, a chunk from Idaho National Lab too, which is, which is real nice. Um, so yeah, those are the various ways you can support. And here's a uh, photo of uh, many of us uh, that you've, you saw yesterday um, in, uh, in, in San Luis Obispo uh, for an event in support of Diablo Canyon late last year. So. Awesome. Um, yeah, thanks so much, guys. Thanks for being here. Thanks for all the advocacy you do. And uh, yeah, have a great lunch and looking, looking forward to the afternoon. Thanks, guys.